All right. Morning. Hi, I'm Mark from Baker Screen Acres. I, I got another question <clears throat> over the uh, email, so I'll give it a give it a go here. I'm just uh, I'm doing my chores here. I'm just watering my my best girls here. Beautiful day in northern Michigan. Sun is high. I'd say it's already 30 35 degrees. It's beautiful, beautiful blue skies. All right, real quick, I got to keep these short. This one comes out of New York City from Tomiko Pirano. Tomiko Pirano, New York City. Okay, these are anyone can farm questions, and if uh, any of you don't know what anyone can farm is, it's you can check it out at anyonecanfarm.com. It's a farm program that we're putting together, starting up this spring. We've we've done it informally for years, but this spring we're going to start up formally. Um, in resident right here on the farm people can come and they can learn the disciplines that we do we've got uh, about six different curriculums right now written um, for different traditional things that we do anyway here's the questions how did the idea for anyone can farm come about uh, that came about uh, me and a friend of mine Tim Dewey and our wives were sitting at a campfire and uh, we, I was explaining to them that a lot of people are interested in these farm disciplines that we do. And uh, I field questions all the time, all the time. And he says, well, why don't you do some videos and put them up so you can just direct the people to the videos. So I did that. Uh, the name Anyone Can Farm comes from the movie Ratatouille, uh, where the, the dead chef says, anyone can cook. And then in, in the movie, uh, a rat winds up standing on... The head of a dishwasher under his hat, of course, of course, and uh, he becomes a great chef. So we felt it was kind of the same, same likeness here with the farming world, where you have people on on one side that say, um, "No, only only we can farm. It's a very complex process, and you can you can kill yourself if you aren't careful with it." And and we feel on the traditional side of farming that. Everyone should be a farmer, and, and really anyone can farm, and it, farming is really quite forgiving, uh, especially if you just work with the, the land and you work with the animals instead of try to dominate them with uh, chemicals and all that big equipment and all that good. Okay, anyway, how do people react when they hear you say anyone can farm? Um, they want an explanation, I guess, and that's the explanation that I usually give, and I feel strongly that anyone can farm. Do you think the general public really understands their lack of food security? I would have to say, let me turn the water off. Okay, I would have to say uh, no, um, because, uh, well, recently there is a, whether it's a real or perceived threat to firearms in our country, if you go to a store and you look at the sporting goods section, the guns are cleared off. Everybody's gone out and bought guns. Everybody's gone out and bought all the ammunition. There's none for sale. So that tells me that if there's a threat, people react. And when I go to the store, I don't see people stocking up on the things that, that they should. I, I just don't see that. However, I'm optimistic because every day I have people sending me questions about our food system and uh, they're, they're questions uh, that relate to their food security so I think people are starting to figure it out and starting to understand that their food security is uh, pretty important okay beyond the hands-on experience what do you hope attendees at anyone can farm will walk away with <clears throat> I hope that the, if they get nothing else they go away with a can-do attitude you know, we will intentionally put obstacles in their way that they're going to feel uncomfortable with, and they will be asked to perform these things. And once they do it, they're going to say, hey, I, I did that. You know, uh, people have been doing this since our country was founded. And if someone else can do it, you can surely do it. You mean, you might say, well, I, I would never put a, a worm on a fish hook. Ah, uh, yes, you would. I mean, p many people have done it before you. You'd do it. We don't do that here, but some people are squeamish about that. All right, so, uh, and last one, 
We are definitely in a David Goliath situation when it comes to regaining control of our food sources. Are you optimistic about our food future? And I think it is a David and Goliath situation, but I don't think we're the David as the, as the family farms and the small farms. Look, I use very little diesel fuel on my farm. Um, uh, I'm not, you know, my bottom line doesn't fluctuate dramatically when the price of fuel at the pumps goes up or down. Um, the, the factory guys, factory farming guys, they do. And what they do is they pass those um, losses on to the customer in various ways. Sometimes it's just the price goes up, but more than likely what's going on now is the quality of the food that you can get from the store from factory farming operations has gone down. And everybody knows that. I mean, they'll, they'll just walk more pesticides to it and more growth homo hormones to get the animals out of the feeding operations quicker. I mean, everybody knows that. And so um, people are figuring that out. And when you have a huge mass of people, 3 billion people in our, in our country, if you could get 50% of them to open up some sort of small farming operation, whether it's, you know, we define farming as growing proteins and carbohydrates. Um, let's say a person does a 10 by 10 garden in their backyard. Well, that's food that they're going to produce and it's going to nourish their body and will uh, not be food that they'll have to buy from the store. If you had half the population doing something like that, yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd say factory farming would have a real tough time. And I'm not out to get them by any means. I'm, I'm responding to what has happened to me at their hands, you know, mostly. And what we do is we just shift gears and we do something different to make ends meet. Well, that's all. I want to keep these short. I hope that uh, helps you out there, Tomiko. And if there are any questions, I already have a couple in my inbox. Um, please get them to me. Uh, I'd like to keep the farm-related stuff, but I can answer just about anything. Did much better when I was 16. Thanks. Remember, anyone can farm.